Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to focus on sexual life cycles, which is the reproduction of cells using sexual reproduction rather than asexual reproduction. Uh, we're going to focus primarily on how variation is created through sexual reproduction and how this uh, influences the uh, inheritance of traits. That's very important that you read chapter 13 before going any further. Um, this material is not that difficult. Pay really close attention to the diagrams. And I'm going to do my best here in this video cast to support uh, your reading. Uh, this chapter basically divides up into four main ideas. Okay, the idea that genes come from your parents and these genes are being carried by chromosomes. Fertilization and meiosis are two different processes that alternate in a sexual life cycle. So you go fertilization, then meiosis, then fertilization, then meiosis. Meiosis produces haploid cells from diploid cells. And finally, sexual reproduction produces, produces genetic variation, which is why sex has become so popular, so to speak, among multicellular organisms. So these are the main ideas to know. Okay, heredity and variation. Two important topics. Offspring inherit traits from their parents, okay? This is why cats produce kittens and dogs produce puppies, because cats are producing kittens that are inheriting cat traits, and dogs are producing puppies that are inheriting dog traits, okay? And they don't mix and match. Uh, these traits that are being inherit, inherited vary from generation to generation, though. So that means kittens from one generation are going to look different from the kittens in the next generation. That's the idea of variation. Uh, you look different from your brother or your sister because of this variation. Genetics is a new science in biology. It's only been around since uh, early in the 19th century, really as a scientific way of looking at um, heredity. Um, it's the study of the patterns of genetic variation and how they're inherited through families. We'll talk more about that a little bit later in this unit. Um, remember, genes are coded information. Genes are used to build proteins and ribosomes, and a lot of these proteins, and sometimes um, other aspects of the, what genes make, are used to regulate or control what's happening. Um, we talked about that in the previous unit. So genes are very important. You can't run or build anything without proper genetic code. They're the recipes for just about everything. If you look at a piece of DNA, DNA code is actually made up of a sequence of amino, excuse me, of nucleic Wow, get this right, of nitro, oh Lord, nucleotides, thank you. And there are only four different nucleotides, A's, T's, C's, and G's. And if you remember, they code by working in groups of three to code for a certain amino acid. So in this, in this um, diagram, ATG is coding for a ye this yellow symbol for an amino acid, whereas CTA is coding for a different amino acid represented by a different color and finally, GGC is coding for this blue one. So here we have three different triplets that are coding for three different amino acids. So genetic code is being translated into a sequence of amino acids. And of course, sequences of amino acids is the primary structure of proteins. Gametes versus somatic cells. There are basically two different types of cells in your body. There are the cells that build your body itself, and those are called somatic cells. Okay, somatic cells are not used for sexual reproduction. They're used to build a body. Gametes, on the other hand, are cells that are built especially for sexual reproduction. So sometimes they're called sex cells, and you can't have sex without them. Uh, everybody's familiar with the shape or structure of um, sperm cells and egg cells. Sperm cells are very small compared to egg cells. They don't carry a lot of cytoplasm. You basically have a, a midsection right here packed with mitochondria. You have a a quote-unquote payload here of DNA in the head region and of course these mitochondria are powering a motility organelle called a flagellum which is allowing the egg to uh, literally swim up a concentration gradient uh, following a signal put out by this giant egg cell which compared to a sperm cell it's like planet sized. Uh, the egg cell is a little bit more complicated. Um, in here in the middle we have the actual egg cell right here surrounded by a halo of support cells which are keeping it alive and feeding it because this is a very very large cell. Um, human egg cells for example are just barely visible to the naked eye. They're so big. About the size of a grain of salt. 
Okay, gametes have evolved over um, the millennia to carry chromosomes from one generation to the next. Okay, so of course humans produce egg cells, and so a human egg cell is going to carry 22 autosomal chromosomes plus an X chromosome. Okay, egg cells, of course, come from females, and females don't have Y chromosomes. Whereas sperm cells are going to carry 22 autosomal chromosomes plus a Y chromosome or an X chromosome. So you can see immediately that it's the sperm cell that determines the sex of the zygote. All right, somatic cells are body cells and they're not used for sexual reproduction, okay? They contain two copies of, the, of each chromosome or a pair of chromosomes. They're called homologous chromosomes and this makes body cells or somatic cells diploid. Gametes, on the other hand, have gone through a process we're going to talk about in a few minutes called meiosis, which makes them have only one copy of each chromosome. So they do not have homologous pairs of chromosomes, and they're said to be haploid cells. Okay, And you'll see why this is so important shortly. We symbolize this with the 2N for diploid cells and the N for haploid cells. Okay, homologous chromosomes are pairs of chromosomes. Uh, they can be called maternal and paternal. So you could say this one comes from the mother. So this could be the maternal. And I'm just going to make this one the paternal. Okay, this just tells you that this chromosome here was inherited from the mother of this individual, and this was inherited from the father. All right. Um, genes are located on chromosomes. Okay, each gene has a certain location or locus where it lives, kind of like the address for a house. Okay, each chromosome may carry a few hundred to a few thousand genes depending on its size. So in each homologous pair of chromosomes, okay, if you look at this diagram, you may have two identical genes at a locus, okay, which means the mother and the father both um, delivered, of this organism, both delivered identical genes, or these genes can differ, okay, and you're you probably remember these, we call them alleles. So for example, this one could be big A and this one could be little a, for example. So you end up with a pair, okay? Notice how genes um, function in pairs in diploid organisms. Okay, haploid cells only have one of these. So the job of meiosis is to get these homologous chromosomes away from each other. Diploid cells, of course, have pairs or homologous pairs of chromosomes. That's what makes them diploid. Okay, asexual reproduction is another name for cloning. Okay, the offspring are all genetically identical to the parent, and many organisms reproduce this way without sex. Uh, for example, in this picture, very simple protozoan, literally just pulling itself apart, but before it divides itself in two, notice how it duplicates its nucleus. Okay, this is plain old mitosis. Okay, plants can also do this. Uh, uh, grass plants, weeds are famous for spreading. All they do is they just continue to grow body parts that can grow into whole new plants. This is another example of asexual reproduction. Uh, sometimes called vegetative reproduction because it's done by vegetables or plants. Okay, um, sexual reproduction, of course, is radically different. Here you combine the genetic components of two parents to make offspring that introduce new combinations of genes. Okay, these new combinations produce what we call variation. If you look in this family, okay, I believe this is Sissy Spacek. I got this picture from our textbook. Um, I assume this is Sissy Spacek's husband and their two daughters. And you'll notice that the daughters share characteristics with both the mother and the father. Really obvious stuff. Everybody knows about this. Okay, you can build a karyotype of a person's chromosomes, and you do this by arranging the chromosomes by size and pairing them up as homologous pairs. So you start out with a cell, you squeeze the chromosomes out of it using um, some laboratory techniques. Um, you can color code them with different dyes or different stains to make them really easy to sort. And then basically you take a picture of them, and then you cut the pictures out either on a computer screen or literally with scissors, and then you pair them up. So you can probably see that he, this is a homologous pair right here, which we pair up right here. So that's chromosome homologous pair number three, or chromosome number three, two of them. And you can do that with all the chromosomes. Of course, in humans, you're going to end up with 22 autosomes, which is all the chromosomes ex you know, except for the last pair. And this individual happens to have two X's, so this would be a female karyotype, all right? 
So karyotypes are just pictures of chromosomes arranged by size and um, paired up um, in pairs. Fertilization is the joining of two different gametes. It's what you get when you jo join a sperm cell and an egg cell to make a zygote. So another way of looking at that is haploid cell plus haploid cell produces a diploid cell, or 23 plus 23 produces 46 in the case of a human. Okay, meiosis is just the opposite. It's a having event. Okay, it's where cells in the ovary, which are diploid, go through a special kind of cell division called meiosis to produce haploid egg cells, or diploid cells in a testis divide using meiosis to produce a special kind of haploid sperm cells. All right. So if we put this together into what we might call a life cycle, okay, the female produces a haploid egg cell. Okay, the male produces a haploid sperm cell by meiosis. These combine in a process called fertilization to produce a zygote. The zygote grows up by doing lots and lots of mitosis, just dividing the cells that it has. Okay, notice this is all blue now because this is the diploid part of our life cycle. And then when this baby reaches adulthood, say it's a little girl, those cells are then going to go through another process called meiosis to produce more egg cells. And so the process continues around and around. Okay, so meiosis um, versus mitosis. Okay, meiosis cuts the chromosome number in half. Mitosis just copies what you already have. And in humans, notice that our, our um, sex cells, our, our gametes, don't go through mitosis. They just form by way of meiosis and then immediately go through fertilization to form to restore the diploid number. Okay, we'll stop there. And the next video cast will look closely at meiosis and genetic variation. Thanks for listening.